Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter for our book club box. I don't have a project to show you. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> um, and this one, if you've read the card, it's not going to the same person. Instead, I wanted you to think about your own journey with reading and everybody has their own experiences. And I wanted you to think about who was someone that supported you or helped you. And it could be a friend that if they read a really good book, they let you borrow it. Or like for me, I think of three people right off the bat. Uh, my mom, I really struggled with reading growing up. Like I did not understand. And she is an ESL teacher and she spent hours and hours with me after school practicing reading with me. And that is why I'm an avid reader because I was not good at it when I was younger. And I'm eternally grateful for that work because reading has brought such a joy into my life. So like immediately I think of her. And then I also think of my mother-in-law who loves to read too. And so me and her are always texting like, have you read this one? I have this one you can borrow when you come and visit. And then third is Nicole who works with us because me and her talk about books all the time and pass them back and forth. And I actually need to ask her if she has a book of mine because I want to read it again. She probably does. <laughs> she probably does. So just things like that. I mean, there's also been local librarians at the community colleges that I went to that were fabulous. If I had a report and was studying something, they would order books for me just so I can effectively do research for my report. Like just... I don't know. Those are just my personal experiences, but maybe take a minute and think about um, friends, um, local libraries, your family, or, you know, just someone who you can connect to um, when it comes to stories and reading and things like that. There's so, always a nice little librarian. Always. 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 And they're yeah. wonderful. Yes. I agree. Go to your library. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's just what we've been saying every we time. We are not sponsored by a <laughs> library. <laughs> so what I envisioned for this project and where Let's Make Art has kind of turned into an opportunity for you guys to see how I come up with projects. And so I don't do them beforehand a lot of times. I just kind of go for it and I problem solve and I think out loud and we're kind of on this journey together. And Yes, so that's kind of what we're doing and what I'm envisioning for this, and you can see a couple of my sketches here, is just kind of like an open book with flowers coming out of it Sweet. and leaves. Sweet. Okay, so we will sketch that and then paint it and cross our fingers, hope it turns out good. Yeah. Yeah? I like that plan. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so the supplies that I'm using are the ones that we are usually have in our boxes. So we have... The four paint brushes, I don't know which ones I'm going to use yet, but I got a round two, round six, round 12, and one inch wash. Um, the colors that we have are the same colors that are in this box, which is deep blue, pine green, fuchsia, deep yellow, and black. I also have a pencil so we can sketch. I'm not too worried about taping this down actually because I don't, I'm not doing like heavy washes. If anything, it's going to be more like a line drawing. Cool. And um, got my water. We're good to go. You're set. All right. So I have my pencil and I'm going to take my watercolor postcard and I'm going to start by drawing my spine for my book. Okay. So I'm going to go roughly in the middle and I'm going to go, mm, this is about, I don't know, a quarter, half inch from the bottom. And I'm just going to do a line in the middle. So you'll see it, this is going to be very sketchy. And if you're not Someone who feels comfortable drawing, don't think of it as drawing. Think of us just making marks on a paper. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we got our pencil, and then I'm just going to kind of um, angle it kind of up a little bit and then down. And have it go almost to the edge, but not quite. Okay. And then one trick that I like to use to see if something is the same length is I'll just use my pencil as a measuring tool. So I'll be like, okay, this is about this long. And then I'll make a mark. Boop. And then that way I know to make it go to that line. Okay? Nice. That's a good tip. Yeah, I totally, you, you can totally use your pencils as measuring tools. I do it all the time. Um, now, remember, too, these do not have to be perfectly symmetrical because books, like depending on the book, it's old. Mm -hmm. Or when you open it, it doesn't always lay flat perfectly. You know what I mean? So like, just give yourself a little bit of grace. And 
And it does feel a little off center though. Is that just me? Let me bigify this for myself here. It is. Ooh. Yeah, did you see that a, measurement? Just a touch. So how I tested it is I just held it to the right hand side, used my fingers and did it back. So that's how off center I am, which is not a big deal because I could just do this. Hmm. There we go. It's still a little bit to the left, but I'm okay with that. I'm fine with a little bit of imperfection. Yeah. So we got our spine, we got this, we got essentially our covers, okay? And then now we're gonna do the pages. Now the pages are really tricky because, you know, there's a lot of them, but just think of them as kind of like a solid piece. And I decided to give my pages, so here's, let's say, here's where they're gonna kind of come out and separate. I wanted to give mine a little bit of a wave, so I'm just gonna like, do a curve. Mm, cool. Have the pages stop before the cover because pages are, for the most part, if it's a hardcover book, the pages are usually shorter. And same thing on this side. Again, they do not need to be symmetrical. And then I'm going to angle the pages down, still within the cover. Okay. Awesome. And then you can just do a bunch of little lines if you want but you don't have to, almost like we're looking at the side of a page, like side of a book, you can kind of see all the little lines sometimes, yep. but not all of them. So if you don't want to put it in, you don't have to. This makes me think of chunky hair that you mentioned <laughs> yes. previously. Yeah, you can even like, sometimes some pages stick out further, you know, like the gaps are thicker. It just kind of depends on your style. Being a book, what are you? A book connoisseur. Fan? Connoisseur. <laughs> uh, do you? How do you feel about dog earring pages? Oh, I'm gonna make people mad. I dog ear. I dog ear like crazy. Okay. I feel like it's the most efficient way to mark your space. Also, I think it makes a book look like you you loved it. I mean, my books look loved, loved. Um, but my husband is not a dog ear, and he gets pretty upset. Mm. Don't tell him I did it to his copy of Dune. I won't. Um, and then I always lose my bookmarks too. So yeah. when I dog ear my page, I don't have to keep track of my bookmark because I always lose them. It's fine, we're fine. Okay, so I'm really sorry if I offended someone with that choice. So now I have my base structure for my book. That's all we really need to do with this book drawing. And then I thought it might be fun to what if we did the book just in black and white? So I, I'm just gonna take my round two and essentially just outline it, go over these pencil marks with black, and then the flower part is colorful. So then it's just like this book is opening up to this colorful world, okay? I, I love that plan. Please. Okay, great. Well, then let's put some color on our palette. So if you want to sketch out your flowers and your leaves beforehand so you have an understanding of placement, you can. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna, just gonna try it. I'm putting fuchsia on my palette. I'm putting deep yellow on my palette. I for sure I'm gonna need black. And if you guys don't wanna use black in a round two to outline your book, you can use a pen if you have one. And if, as long as you don't get that portion wet, you can use whatever pen you have. If you do plan on getting that portion wet, then you're gonna want a pen that won't bleed with water. You know what I mean? Got it. All right. So I'm going to, do I want to, I'm going to start with my two. I'm going to mix together a green. I also have pine green that I can put on my palette, but I want a really warm green. So I'm just going to mix it. And uh, let's start here. I'm going to have, I'm going to think about making sure that my flowers, like whatever is coming out of it, I want it to angle like sun rays almost. Mm. So a stem's gonna be here, 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 okay? Mm -hmm. Make mm -hmm. them various lengths, all of that kind of stuff, but generally I want the movement to be like it's splayed open with the flowers and leaves. And then I'm just gonna go for it.
And you can do really tiny detail. You can keep it loose. Whatever you want. And for me, most of the time going into a painting, I don't make that decision yet. Like, do I want this to be very detailed with a bunch of thin lines? Do I want this to be like more atmospheric or, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I just start and then I kind of just respond to what's happening. So as in terms of like, where is this gonna go? I don't know yet. But as I make those decisions, I'll tell you. Okay, I think I should do like, um, maybe like a Black Eyed Susan. Oh yeah. So those are pretty fun. The petals essentially go down. It's like a daisy, except the petals just kind of go down like that. This would really be cool to figure out whoever you're going to give this to, mm -hmm. their favorite book. Yes. And see what kind of elements that book has, like either plant-wise or even just color-wise. Yeah. And then you could put, instead of leaves, you could put specific words, like descriptive, the, or even the, the, the stems could be a thin line of word. Oh, like that a, would be like really a cool. Quote, maybe. Yeah. You know? Or like if you were to do like where the crawdad scene, uh, where the crawdad. Oh my gosh, I just had a brain fart. Where the crawdad scene. Thank you. Um, you said it out loud. I did. You did. I just got really self conscious and I lost my. Sorry. It went away. <laughs> <laughs> you can do seashells coming out of it because she's like, does a oh, lot of that, that kind of illustration. Cool. You can even open up to a scene from the book, which was a project idea for this, but I couldn't make it happen. I wanted a book to open up to like a mountain range. Ooh. It didn't work very well, but that's okay. <laughs> And you can take that idea and you can run with it. I was not successful on that venture. That's awesome. <laughs> and I can do a little like Snapdragon. I love these little ones. Mm -hmm. This is kind of just a rounded organic shape that gets smaller as it goes out. And then I'm gonna add a stem to that. Let's also add a nice long leaf. Okay, and you can even, let's throw in like a blue, tiny little guy right here. You can change up the colors. Ooh, you could try and, uh, you could try and relate this to all the previous projects from the box. You How so? Some, Talk could, more. Okay, you could throw in some cattails from oh, the marsh. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, maybe even a hint of a blue herring. Uh, yes. And then some poppies. Oh, yeah. Course. And then the grass can come off the pages from the Hobbit house. Love it. And for me, I want this to feel very, like, full. So I have, like, my main... Some of my man, I still need to do the ones on the side here, but then in between it's feeling a little bare, right? So mm. then it's just like, okay, what can I do? And so what if I do like tiny little flowers in between, like little groupings? And these are just the basic little five petal roundish flowers. Maybe we can do some, I, I always go for dots. I feel like dots is just like a really fun illustrative way to activate a space and bring a little bit of whimsy without it feeling too heavy. Mm, I agree. Oh, I did a water drop. Let me wipe that up. Okay. You can do little stars, like the little boop, 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 boop for magic. I don't know if you guys can see that because I'm doing them really tiny. And notice that even though I had the idea to not paint my book and to just kind of draw it, I haven't done that yet. And that's mostly because 
I want to see how this turns out and feels before I make that decision. What should we do? What should this one be? <laughs> How do you feel about another blue one? Oh yeah, good idea. And I'll just switch up the shape of the leaf a little bit. And I'm gonna have them all kind of come out of the center. Let's do another, let's do like a long turquoisey one. Mm. Now when you mix this deep yellow and deep blue together, they actually desaturate a little bit. They don't turn into this very vibrant green, um, especially when you add like water to it. But I really like that color. It's like a really calming blue. So I'm gonna keep going with that. So I'm doing long skinny leaves. I love this color. Yeah, that's nice. I love that color so much that I feel like I need to incorporate it over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna do the same leaf. And you can decide, you're gonna come up into some instances where the leaves could like run into each other and you can decide, do I want them to overlap, do I not? I don't think there's a right or a wrong. You can just make that decision. I kind of decided to avoid them for the most part, let them each have their own little space. But again, this is your painting. I feel like I need more pink. So let's do some little pops of pink flowers. This is looking so darn cute. <laughs> I know, I love this, it's awesome. getting a little too much water on my brush. And whenever that happens, like sometimes you just have so much water on your brush that when you go to put it down on your paper, it creates like a water drop. I just soak it up with, with some paint. I think I'm gonna go back to some more just green. And let's do like a thinner one here. I think you mean when you, when you soak up the water, you soak it up with paper towel. What did I say? With paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, paper towel. <laughs> That's what I meant. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> and let's do, let's do another, we can do a cone flower, which is very similar to a black eyed Susan. I'm pretty sure. Are they the same flower? Keenan? Let, let me tell you what I know. Go ahead and research that for me. <laughs> They are different flowers. Okay, well, good to know. <laughs> I've literally painted all of those flowers so many times. You'd think that I would know, but I don't. It is in the sunflower family. Okay. Um, the species are commonly called cone flowers and black-eyed Susans, so they might be the same flower. <laughs> So when you said no, you meant yes? Yes, I oh, led you great. to believe. <laughs> I believe they weren't the same flower because you told me they weren't the yes. same flower. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, somebody watching this knows this answer and is probably just yelling at their screen. screen and I'm so sorry. They're saying, fly, you fools. <laughs> <laughs> it's confusing because this site says 
If your garden bed is in partial shade, cone flowers will be the best get, as they can tolerate light shade, while black eyed Susans require full sun. So then I would assume those are different Correct. flowers, but just related in the same family. Right. And then the question was posed Is cone flower the same as black eyed Susan? And it says, the species are commonly called cone flowers and black eyed Susans. So there's too many, <laughs> there's too much grammar here to confuse me. I don't know. Okay. So I feel really good about my plants coming out of my book. Like that's cute. I don't, I don't care who you are. That looks pretty darn cute. Okay. And for me, maybe just a little bit of detail. And so Keenan, can you go to the side cam to make yes, sure that they can see that? I'm going to, on the ones that are dry, just using my two and just doing the smallest little veins. Oh, that's nice. It's just a nice little way to like add that detail in there. Give it, make it feel a little bit more finished. And for the green one, we need a darker green. It's really hard to get super thin lines though. If you have a liner brush, you can totally use a liner brush instead. Those That would be really helpful. Mm. If you just struggle with thin lines in general, then I would suggest looking at liner brushes. I prefer a liner size two. Um, it's just, they're long and skinny bristles that are even. So it's just way easier to get an even thin line. And I'm going to put a flower here because my stem kind of lifted up. And instead of trying to like make that line continue with green, I'm just going to cover that area up with the little flowers. Okay. Well, that, that's cute. <laughs> that's awesome. And maybe a little bit out of here too. All right. And then now you can decide what you want to do with your book. I still feel good about just leaving it black and white. I'm looking at that in contrast to the colorful and um, I really like it. So that's what I'm going to do. You can use a pen, you can use whatever you have. So I'm just going to take my round two, grab some black. If you don't have a pen, you can do this. And basically just go over my drawings. Now the cover portion, I'm going to make a little bit thicker line. And if you wanted to add a little bit, oh, I'm like struggling right now. If I want to make this cover blue too late, I'm keeping it black. I'm keeping with my plan. You can always paint another one too. So make the cover portion thicker. So then the viewer knows that this is like the cover. And if you need to turn your paper, it's easier for me to do lines angled when I turn my paper. Okay. And then when it comes to the pages itself, you could, if you have struggle with getting really, really thin lines, you can just use a pencil and leave it that you can control that line a little bit more. Cause what I don't want is for the pages to get so thick that it feels like chunky pages compared to like these really delicate flowers. So I'm going to just do be really light with my, um, round two and put some of these in. But if you struggle with that, just leave it your pencil marks. I was going to say also, if you do a lighter grayish, you're in lead, just do a couple painted ones or your pencil will be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, for those who are like, do I need to erase my pencil marks? First of all, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You make up the rules here. Yeah. Secondly, if the pencil marks are bothering you, what I would suggest doing 
is wait until your paper is totally dry, like give it give it hours to be safe, and then come back to it with a gentle eraser and work around the paint. It should be dry enough that you should be able to lift up that pencil. But just as a warning, if water has touched that pencil or paint, you will not be able to lift that up. For me, I'm fine with that little sketchy feel that you can kind of see. I don't think it detracts from the painting. Um, I think it actually adds to it. So I'm not gonna like mess with that. I'm just gonna leave it. And there's our cute little postcard. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wanted to, I mean, depending on everyone is going to look different. Your books are going to be different sizes. You can write a little note right here. If you wanted to do a border, should we do a border? Mm. Yes. I was actually thinking the, a quote would be really cool a underneath qu it. Yes. You know, a quote would be cool, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do mm. a border. Okay. I'm going to do a scallop edge border because we did that for our Christmas cards. Oh yeah. And I love how that looked. <laughs> And I'm just a fan of scallops in general. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use that really gorgeous desaturated blue, like this sage blue, mm. and just take my round six. Half circles all the way around. They don't need to be perfect. So the scallops are going into our painting where I think on the card I did, they were coming out. <laughs> this is just the cutest little thing. I'm so happy with it. You know what scallops make me think of? What? Doilies. Yeah, totally. Okay. Let's keep turning this guy. And this is a very light blue. So you might even be like, can I see that? But I'll hold it up after. Especially too with the lights glaring and this paint being wet, it makes it a little bit tricky sometimes to see. And because I'm like mixing my color in real time and I'm picking it up at different times, some of my scallops are gonna be a slightly different color, a different value, and I love those variations. I feel like it just adds to the painting. So allow those to happen. Okay, wait a second. I just had an idea. Okay, tell us. What if you wanted to start a book club and you made these as invitations and then on the back you wrote, do you want to join my book club? Hashtag yes or no. <laughs> Check yes or Check no. Check yes or no. <laughs> that would be... So cute. That would be awesome. That's a great invitation idea. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. Hashtag be here all day. Hashtag what? Be here all day. Be here all we'll day. We'll be here all day. Reading? Mm -mm. Never mind. Doing what? Doing what? Just painting? Uh, with more ideas. We've got all the oh. ideas for you. <laughs> yes. Hashtag we got your back. <laughs> Hashtag we'll make your party awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is our this is our postcard for our um, Let's Make Art Matter for February. Can we get that side angle? That turned out so fun. Down a little bit. Down. Oh my oh, gosh. Look at it. It's so cute. Okay. I literally had the best time painting this. <laughs> I hope you have fun with it. I hope you give yourself permission to play. Play with different styles. This is definitely more like playful and illustrative with the pen and ink kind of more style. But if that's not your thing, do your thing. And we love you for it. That's so great. Um, think of someone that has impacted your life positively when it comes to reading and take the time to send this postcard. It seems small. It seems small in the way of when people are struggling, how can a four by six painted postcard actually help? But it's not about the four by six postcard. It is about the fact that another person thought about them enough to make them something something, and put it in the mail. <laughs> that is big. That is big in this day and age, right? So don't overwhelm yourself with thinking that it needs to be perfect or thinking that we're gonna solve all the issues. It's not about that. It's just a way for us to show up for each other. And I think that when we just do these small acts of kindness, showing up for each other, it just overall makes the world a better place. And I want the world to be a better place. Absolutely. 
I want there to be kindness and love and appreciation and support. And we can do that. All we have to do is just take 20 to 30 minutes out of our day, paint a little postcard and drop it in the mail. Um, <laughs> every time I look at this, I just smile. I really <laughs> am so in love with it. Okay, if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Again, this is part of the book club box. So if you are not a subscriber, I'm not sure if we have any extra inventory, but you can look at our website to see if we do. And um, if you're on Instagram, tag us at let's go make art. Or if you're on Facebook, you can join our Facebook community. That is called Let's make our watercolor. And if there is someone specific that you would like to nominate for this program, you can go to our website, letsmakeart.com, scroll down to a button, find the nominate form but, uh, section that we have, and nominate them. Okay? Okay. Sp spread some love and support. Yeah. Give an art hug, as Ooh, we like to say. I like that. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.